Sure, guaranteed Irish class kids, lumps and Megan Scully, August and Ish. I'm delighted to be joined by Jay Carter. How are you getting on? Hi, Megan. All good yourself? I'm very good, thank you. Getting through this self isolation, cocooning, lockdown, whatever phrase you want to use. How are you finding it? Um, I'm kind of getting used to it now. I suppose it's becoming the, the new normal. We're on, I think, about week six, is it now? Week seven? Uh, week six, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's tough not being on stage, not working not seeing the lads in the band, it's, you know, it is tough, like, but you have to do it and everyone's in the same boat. So uh, we're just trying to keep busy, trying to keep as active as possible and yeah, trying to not lose the touch, I guess. <laughs> well, I think as well for a lot of artists that I've been speaking to, I think you, you almost are, you almost have gone through this process already when you're writing music. So it's probably unusual that you've been put into it kind of without putting yourself into it, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely, especially being a songwriter. A lot of people, when, when this all started, were kind of like, oh, do you know, that must be amazing. You'll have loads of time to write songs. But I kind of, the first few weeks, I found it the complete opposite because I, I wasn't doing anything. And there was no, it was kind of like, as cliche as it, as it sounds, there was no inspiration to do anything. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. I was literally just in, sitting, sitting in the house, playing PlayStation, <laughs> watching Netflix, getting fat. That was all I was doing for the first couple of weeks. And then it took a little while, but uh, slowly but surely, the last few weeks now, I've been doing a lot of writing sessions because that's kind of all we can do. You know, I'm doing the covers online and the odd bits for social media still. But the only part of my job that I still can do with thanks to like the likes of Zoom and Skype and video calling is songwriting, which is amazing really, because you can still write with guys over in Sweden or Norway. And it's all the same as writing with guys down the road because you can't go and see them. Yeah, and I suppose a lot of artists do that, that they work with people who, who I said, live abroad, and sometimes they never actually get physically into the studio with them, but still might produce songs together. So I suppose, as you said, it's kind of a chance to keep that going. Yeah, that's it. We released a, a track um, last year actually called Supernatural, which was written by myself and a fellow Irish uh, songwriter, but also two writers from Sweden. Uh, and funny enough, they actually produced most of the track as well over in Sweden. So it was kind of, it was a bit like that. It's a bit strange that it can be done over, I guess, without even meeting them. We did meet the lads, but, you know, it's, it's another way into, I guess, music production and, um, you know, branching further afield because the lads over there, they were amazing at producing and amazing songwriters as well. So it was great to be able to do that. That's pretty cool. Now, I have to say, I did see you on TV recently and I see you've got a new talent um, of being a barber. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you'd call it a talent. I'm a good bluffer <laughs> at singing as well as barbering, to be honest. Uh, but no, we were on, we, I cut Nathan's hair on the, the Claire Byrne show there last two weeks ago. Was that last week? Yeah, two weeks ago. Oh, two weeks ago, uh, it's mad. Yeah, it's mad. Oh, time is flying. I don't the jinx stuff, but the days do go quick when you when you doing nothing, I guess. The days <laughs> do go quick. But no, I gave him a, well, I don't know if you call it a haircut, a, a trim on the back and sides. Um, but it was that good. He actually asked me yesterday if I'd do it again. So I, I must okay. have done a bad one. Right? I think there might be a, a live Instagram something going on there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did a great job. I, I said it to my, I had an aunt who has to cut my, my godson's hair. And I said, I said, because the, the hairdresser kind of showing you, talking you through it. So I said to my aunt, I was like, you need to look back at that clip. I was like, there's a way, to, there's a proper way to do it. Yeah, I don't think I was doing it the proper way, to be honest. As long as there was no blood, I was happy. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good start. Now, you did mention there about doing the covers. I've seen a few of them there on IGTV. Um, like, I think, and I love them. I say some great songs in there. So how are you finding that? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I used to, when I started out, I was gigging in pubs and clubs and I guess singing the most random set list of songs because it, like, I, I love all different types of music. You know what I mean? Obviously, my stuff is very poppy, pop punk, like Charlie Puth and Shawn Mendes. But, you know, if you actually look into my Spotify, there's everything from, like, the Beatles to Elton John and then all that modern stuff as well. So it's great, I guess, when this all happened, I was kind of like, how am I going to keep things going? A lot of the people were messaging me on Instagram, asking me to do Facebook Lives. And I was kind of one of the people that was like, oh my God, everyone is doing a Facebook Live. My phone was just like, live, live, live. I was <laughs> yeah. like, no, no, I can't do it yet. So I was like, you know what? I'll just throw up a cover every couple of days and it'll give me a chance to, I guess, sing songs that I haven't sang in years, you know, that I was singing in the pubs and clubs and the people would ask. So I kind of been throwing a cover up uh, every couple of days I've done. I, like, I love the Beatles, obviously being from Liverpool, so it's great to go back through the Beatles catalogue and find all these songs that, you know, you haven't forgotten, but you haven't heard in ages. So I've been doing covers of like the Beatles stuff. I did 
uh, the weekend, flying in lights there yeah. last week. Um, do you know, it's everything. Um, and I've asked people to send in kind of requests and stuff, and it's been great finding some of the songs um, that you wouldn't necessarily hear being done in an acoustic fashion as such and slowed down. So it's nice and people seem to be enjoying it and it gets a great reaction each one that I put up. And it's, it's a good way of, I guess, keeping things going, you know, during these crazy times, keeping the music going and keeping the, the creative juices flowing in the brain. Yeah, I have to say, I do love listening to different covers on, on social media. I'm just there and I'll see one. I'll just click into it and I just have it on there while I'm doing some work. It's great. Um, have you yeah. and Nathan been doing any writing together now that you're uh, cocooning together? Are you both, are, are you kind of strict and you're both like, you know, you both have separate jobs. So you're kind of keeping it separate or sometimes you kind of like sitting there over breakfast being like, ah, come here, we work together on this. Yeah, no, to be honest, we both song, right? But we've never uh, song, song wrote, song written. We've never done a writing session. <laughs> Uh, together and it's kind of strange um, I don't know why it is um, but we just never have maybe you know I'm sure we're going to be trapped now for another few weeks and so maybe it's <laughs> something that we should definitely look into but um, as I was on about Facebook lives that Nathan did one two weeks ago and I, I played guitar for him uh, for we did it was only meant to be for about 20 minutes. It ended up like, I think it was two hours, the Facebook Live was, but it was good fun. And uh, we actually raised money for, um, I think it was for the NHS in Enniskillen and for Manor where we are. So it was great. Um, so we've done little stuff like that, but we haven't, haven't actually done any songwriting together. So uh, it's hard for to keep him sitting still, to be honest. <laughs> just, I think he's out there chopping a tree or something at the minute. He's, he just can't sit still for long enough. You know what you should do? You should write him a song, he should write you a song, it'd be like a challenge, and then you have to perform it live. That's it, yeah, I'll write him a country song and he can write me a pop one, yeah. see how that goes. It's a bit of crack, like, you just see, you can send each other a challenge and, like, set a certain amount of time aside to kind of sit down, write, get it together, and then perform it. I don't know if I'd trust them, to be honest. <laughs> I love it. Um, also, I have to ask you about your TikTok because I was like, you know, TikTok now has become massive. I joined myself. I haven't a clue what I'm doing. Um, but how are you <laughs> finding it? Because it's a really fun thing to do. Yeah. So I created the TikTok account uh, about a year ago and put really? up like two videos and then I was like, ah, oh, no, I can't do that. Can't get my head around that. But now since this has happened and obviously we're all inside isolating, I've started to use it more and more. And it's great as well because the covers that I've been putting up on Instagram and Facebook and stuff and YouTube, I've also been putting little snippets on TikTok. So it's keeping it in with the music, but then we've been trying to do like the odd TikTok dances and you know, <laughs> random stuff. Um, me and Nathan actually, sang a, a short version of uh, the Beatles song, I Want to Hold Your Hand, but changed the lyrics to Wash Your Hands. And that got a great reaction. You know, TikToks, actually, it's amazing because you sit there, I was lying in bed there yesterday, and you don't realise, you're flicking through, and like an hour later, you're like, what have I been doing? Do you know what I mean? You've just been looking at TikToks. Um, but it's great fun, and um, as well, it keeps, keeps, uh, keeps you busy and kills another couple of hours throughout the day. That's exactly it. I joined it. I said, look, I'll, I'll just join because everyone is saying. And then uh, like that, I was kind of, before I knew it, I was hours into it. And then I was trying to create videos, but I realized I'm very, for someone who creates videos on a weekly basis for my job, I am really struggling with TikTok. It's like a whole other world. The, the dances are so hard. Like I, I don't dance with stars, obviously, and did that for 12 weeks. And I won that. And I was, you know, I was all right at it, but I've never found something as hard as learning a TikTok dance. It's so hard. <laughs> Some of them are crazy, and you see some of the little kids doing all this stuff with, your, with the hands, and you're like, how is that even possible? I know, it is. It's absolutely class. Jay Carter, it's an absolute pleasure chatting to you. I could stay chatting to you for ages, but I suppose, I think you should firstly go out and help your brother with that tree, and uh, yeah. then I think we must, when we're back in studio, live in studio, we'll get you in for a live session as well. Definitely, I'd love to do it. It's been absolutely incredible. I hope you enjoy the rest of your lockdown cocooning, self-isolation, and we can't wait to see you back on stage. Thanks a million, Megan. Bye. I'll chat to you soon. Bye-bye.